as we all know, words. But furthermore, other things indeed. The world in which we live is vast, minuscule, and really just whatever you want. Medium and so on. We learn, we explore, we define, we math, we science. We forget. Under great duress, we science again. Because we must. We must find out how big things are. Is it very? Is it less than? We do not know. And yet we will, thanks to the wonders, the miracles, the what's-its, the how's-its, the phenomena, the bewilderments of scientifics. Hi, welcome to the Small Beans program, Bewilderments and Scientifics. This podcast series is an ongoing conversation with the celebrity and educator, the prolific and brilliant Professor Scott Bug. I'm your host, Abe Epperson. I have no science degree, but have long been in love with physics, biology, and the scientific method. I only hope to act on behalf of all of us as an intermediate, choosing topics and asking questions we all hope to understand more fully. And to enlighten us, I'd like to introduce Professor Scott Bug. Hello there. I'm Professor Scott, also Scott Bug, Doctor of Weird Questions at the Global Department of Inquisitoria in Newark. I teach looking at and thinking about at the University of Nausea here. And once a month, you can find me teaching a secret class about <laughs> at an undisclosed location that I will email you if you sign up at Dot gov. You have one chance. If you receive an email but do not show up, you will be banned from all public classes taught by Professor Scott Pug, and you will lose access to this podcast. Do not disappoint me, yourself, or science itself. I also teach a class on The Simpsons at Harvard. Thank you, Professor. So today's topic is constellations. Uh, now, they're defined as a group of stars forming recognizable patterns uh, traditionally named after their apparent form or identified with like a mythological figure or something like that. Historical texts and references painted a very elaborate tapestry with our relationship with the stars. Uh, I have a few basic starter questions like how are constellations formed uh, from our perspective? How are they named? What do constellations do? So many things. I love these questions already, and I can't wait to inform you. And speaking of an informing you, information, the word Mm -hmm. constellation, if we break it down, so stellar, stellar, Mm -hmm. is good. Yeah? Good. Asian, information. Good information is what we get from constellations. Constellations, if you look up, they are, as we all know, made of stars. Star coming from a form of the word good as well. Because we love stars. It's what gives us life. It's where we get warmth. It's where we get energy. It lets us see each other and go, hello over there, and you know who I was speaking, because you see me, I'm waving. Thank you, the star. So stars are formed in various ways. I can explain and get very deep into this. You know, there's a, you know, there's always a, a sort of a line in asking these sort of questions. You say, okay, well, what's a constellation? I say, well, it's this, and it's made up of these. And you say, okay, mm. but what are those things? And I say, well, it's this, and it works via this force, via this law of energy and matter. And I can go deep and deep and deeper and deeper and deeper. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's more about with, when that line uh, comes up and you say, nah, I don't want to know anymore. But um, stars are formed uh, via mm-hmm. hundreds of thousands of millions of years of effort um, from various little creatures. And when they finally get the job done, you got a star. They move it into a spot, mm-hmm. and then they move on to the next one. Another hundred thousand million or so years, you got another star. You move it where you need it, mm-hmm. and there it is. You step back far enough, you know, a couple of feet, a couple more feet, maybe a hundred feet, a mile or two, and it starts to go like, oh, I can see both of them now. I can see where they are in relation to each other. You step back even further, maybe even fly, you know. We, we Uh we, We do not need to be bound by these earthly toad claws that we have on our legs. We fly, we fly away, and we look up and we see these tiny little dots. 
We call them constellations. We call them stars. Uh, we call them many things. What they are are these stars that were created, moved into an arrangement. And when we look at the arrangement, yes, we have these names. Oh, that's a lion. It's it's more way more than that. What it is, if you analyze them closely enough, information. As I said, good information. I good can look up. I can look up the Big Dipper, and I can say, now I know a little more algebra. Yeah, I yeah. can. I can look over here, and I can look at this constellation, and I can say that is the Pythagorean theorem. Right. That's how, that's how we know it. Written in the sky. Exactly. The constellation Pythagoras shows us the Pythagorean theorem. It, it's a little, you know, hard to decipher. It took us many, many years. Sailors mm. were the first to say, hey, there's some stuff up there we better be looking at, you know? Uh-huh. Um, and they, uh, they've long, these long journeys across, o- across oceans. They had a lot of time on their hands. You know, they get a little bored, they stare up at the, at the constellations, and they think, wait a second, is that a one? Wait a second, over here, mm. that's a minus over there. And they started to sort of put them together. And you read these old almanacs, these old journals of the, uh, the grizzled old sea captains, and it's so much of what we know now, it's how we decipher the universe how we communicate with the universe it's the universe speaking to us and saying look here's a little help with your math and so more or less stars were created by creatures arranged in constellations and now we decipher the constellations to learn various equations about physics about astrophysics about quantum physics and things that you know aren't even categorized as physics right so Wow. Okay. So can you speak a little bit more about the creatures that create uh, stars? Oh, absolutely. Uh, we, you know, they are a bit sneaky. You know, we don't know everything about them. Um, sneaky. They, it was many, many years ago. And then, yes, there are still constellations being made to this day. Um, the, we are keeping track of current stars being built right now. We don't know mm-hmm. where they're going to be placed because, you know, a star, if a star is being made over here, that doesn't mean it's going to stay there. It could be very well moved uh, to its appropriate position so we can use our telescopes to decipher what it means in relation to the others. What's the equation we're going to get out of this? Uh, what's right. the fact, you know? Uh, even, even simple stuff. I mentioned Leo the lion earlier. We didn't get mm-hmm. any math out of that. We just got a fact. Lions are raw. We already knew that, but that is yeah. what the constellation told us. So it's you know, it's good information. It's good. It is still good information. It's not necessarily right. useful to us because we already had it through other aspects of science. Uh, mm. So you know, they're not always winners. You know, we're not always going to land a, a Pythagorean theorem out of it. Sometimes right. it's just here's the animal that makes the sound. Uh-huh. Uh, so you know, they're they're sneaky. Uh, it's a long pro- process. So we don't. Uh, we can see the stars. We cannot see them. They're sort of shielded by the fields that are created when a star is formed. Um, We do know that many of the constellations uh, reflect qualities of these creatures. So the lion raw fact, we do know that the creatures that made that had some feline attributes, some felinity, Mm -hmm. if you will, to Mm -hmm. them. Um, Mm -hmm. We don't know if they're big. We don't know if they're small. We assume they're large because they're moving these stars. But the universe is a tricky place. It's a sneaky place. It's a beautiful, wondrous place. They could be tiny little meatballs, you know, just moving stars around. They could could be some other delicious... Sneaky little meatballs. You don't know. We don't know. Perhaps. Perhaps. I wonder wonder if there's a... You know what I wonder? I wonder if there's a constellation of... uh, one of the sneaky creatures, and we just haven't seen it yet. You know we what I mean? We are currently monitoring all this, the known in construction stars because we are hoping, there is a hypothesis out there, an idea that one day we will get a constellation that tells us exactly who is making them. An autobiography, if you will, mm. of these creatures mm. telling us, hey, by the way, you're welcome. Here's who did it for you. Right. So... There's kind of the elephant in the room. Mm. Everyone's wondering about Orion, Mm. right? 
<laughs> so below Orion's belt, <laughs> there's like a little hang down. <laughs> is it a sword or is that Orion's dick? I don't mean to be crude, but uh-huh. it's his penis. Yes. It's, it's his dick. Indeed. Um, Great. It's it's his uh, um, throbbing cock, if you will. His his big his big his big swing and ding dong we call it mm-hmm. in the science community. Right, um, right. It's actually and interestingly enough, Orion is how we discovered we had penises. We simply no. did not. Yes, we simply did not know. This is the information we get from the glory, the heavens. The heavens let yes. us know. And I tell you, when we found out, we got nothing done. For a few years, we got nothing, nothing, nothing done, bruv. Nothing. Yeah, right. Yeah, we got, we didn't, we, it was a fuck party all around the globe. Yeah, 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 getting in there. All around yeah, the globe. Just all around the globe, just getting in there, you know, yeah, sort of like wiping her. Yeah, 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 it's right there. Yeah, it was real wild. That, it was real fu- <laughs> fucking, real fuck fest, yeah, bruv. Yeah. That I, is, <laughs> that is what, I didn't even read about that in history. Man, they don't want you to know. They should put that up in the sky. Um, so you said, do we know the, the sneaky creatures that move stars? <laughs> do we know why they move the stars? And what does that do to the information? Like, what if someone just moves the Pythagorean theorem a little bit? You know? Oh, God forbid. Does that ruin it? Science forbid. Yes, it does. Um, the thing, the thing about stars, they're very, you know, they're very powerful. They're very large. They're very fixed. Um, there's a reason that they're arranged in the way that they are. Um, the laws of physics are very precise. If something was off by a bit, you know, we might not even exist. Uh, stars might not be able to even form. Uh, we might not have planets. Um, wow. They're very, very precise. Um, if you're making a star, you can't. Um, you, you gotta have your factory. Yeah, you can't just do it anywhere. You're not gonna go mm. on site and build the thing. You're gonna make it and then you're gonna ship it. So, um, you make the thing. You put it in the arrangement, and that mm. solidifies. And then that is just that becomes how things are. If we were to ever uh, become powerful enough to harness stars for ourselves, to be able to move wow. them, to arrange them, we would. That would be able to change our own reality exactly we would be able to change the laws of physics themselves we should definitely do that and not ask any questions we are trying to and we will ask nothing so they they don't change that much because i don't feel like different like i wake up every day and it's like the same same day every day (gasps) and it's like one little change what in a star like life would be suddenly different. They don't change that often. No, they don't. We could, we could, if we wanted to one day, we could make lions quack. We can make lions quack. Just a little adjustment. Or maybe they'll just start quacking and we'll be like, that's the way it is. Cause Mm -hmm. look up. We Uh, could make, we could make humans have several big swinging ding dongs. If we wanted to. So yeah. Or no ding dongs. Or no ding dongs. We're working on, we're working on both, but. Because you hear about stars get, you know, that blow up because they're all like used up and gross. Mm-hmm. Um, I just wonder. So those those are stars that aren't usually in constellations. Is that is that? Um, if they, because I hear that. Yes, but it does I also happen. Hearing what you're saying now, it they okay. uh, that does happen. Um, uh, sometimes they are in a constellation. It's usually not a, a universe bearing constellation. You know, mm. uh, we're not gonna you know take you know equals mc squared and then just like blow up one of the stars um that would cause quite with if we did that we wouldn't even be able to see a blow up you know Um, yeah but uh but you know so if you see you know a supernova things like that or just the slow deterioration these are all controlled explosions it's a Mm. controlled environment it's planned ahead um these creatures they know when things need to change ahead we hope you know we've got a lot of faith in these these little creatures and um they haven't steered us wrong yet. Did you so, say creatures? I do. It's a cuter way of saying creatures. It's, that's very cute. Thank you. Man, this is a lot of... Because I'm starting to think about free will and mm. universal universal bearing mm-hmm. constantly. This is... Mm. You know what? I need some help. Mm. I mean, we all I, do. I need some help to figure this all out, Professor. But luckily, 
we have someone who can help us. Thank goodness. Today, we have the pleasure of calling up Dr. Yuvla Tardanis I, licensed stellartician, social constellationist, and writer of Stars and Their Luminosophy. Yes. Um, thank you so much for that introduction. It's a pleasure to meet you, or meet your form, I should say. <laughs> Dr. Bug. Yes. Oh, yes. And uh, yes. yes, and 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 Abe as well. Um, of course, we've met, you know, as all minds have met before, um, which mm. I'm sure we'll touch on in this. But as as you know, stars have no form, and that is what I specialize in. So I'm very happy to be here. Uh, I am surprised that you know about Orion's dick. Um, that is not. As common knowledge these days, it's lost knowledge. So I know, I see you know your stuff. It's just something that you know has been blowing up Twitter for the last few months now, and it's just like what what's happening with Orion's dick, you know. So I figured I'd ask you guys. Um, well, well, you know what is interesting about Orion's dick is it part of what mm -hmm. I do is giving form to the formless, um, which as some as you mentioned before, um, some call those constellations, but much like you as a person have eyeballs and, um, you know, a heart and blood cells, but you are an entire form, a person. So in the same way, stars also are individuals, yet wow. also exist as a whole constellation. So um, the dick is very interesting because um, sometimes parts of a form do pivot off and create their own storyline, much like um, what's that popular TV show um, that, that Young humans Sheldon. watch. Oh. Yes, as Young Sheldon is a great example. I, I, I assume it's from the old Sheldon was the original, <laughs> the is that correct? The old Sheldon was the first one. So, so it's, it's a spin-off. Spin -off. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm not familiar as much with that one, but um, in this case, the dick became such a, a magnificent form that it, it created its own form all on its own. Right. So. Some go to see Orion, some go to see Orion's dick, and some make a whole weekend out of it and see both. Much like you would go to Disneyland and California Adventure, but you don't have to that, do both. That, that is a great metaphor. I totally understand this. Uh, Thank you. Thank do, you, do you so much. Professor, do you also agree? I sit down every night and write at least 10 to 15 metaphors. That's the golden number for metaphors. Yes, you know, the golden number. You're familiar. 10 to 15, exactly. Mm hmm Exactly. So, uh, I wanted to ask you about, uh, Dr. Sure, sure. I wanted to, uh, I wanted to ask you about your specialization, but like, what's your day to day really like? Oh, sure. And I, I will say, um, I do have many titles and, and the reality is the social constellationist, that is just a hobby. Um, I, I am not officially licensed as a social constellationist, but mm -hmm. I do know that, um, Sometimes, you know, how you might throw an underground rave uh, without a liquor license. Sometimes stars who are not of age uh, want to have fun. So I provide the social atmosphere for those constellations to have fun. Um, oh. But I do need to specify that that is not my professional. Um, got it. You probably found that on my, you probably found my Finsta and that's probably where you yes. got that from. Uh, and that's quite all right. Um, I do separate my work life and my social constellation life. Right on. But what I do day to day, um, well, it's actually very riveting. It's very thrilling. So, in fact, I actually I work night to night because, as you know, stars, they are nocturnal. Yes, correct. Yeah. Sometimes people have take issue with right. my classification of stars as nocturnal. And no, 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 uh, they are very nocturnal. They, they're very, they, you know, the sun comes out and they're like, <laughs> they're not, they're not having it. Yes, correct. And and, and the reason true. I specify that is because we live in the human world where we all of these terms are through the eyes of humans. So, of course, as we see stars, we are looking at them through our human eyes. And to us, we, they don't have the consciousness that we do. However, if you were a star, mm. and that is what I aspire to speak for, you know, I speak for the stars, I am a, a way, a medium, if you will. Um, so when I wake up, my first thought is, what would I feel if I were a star? And, and that's the best way to get into the minds of your clients, is not just to hear them, but to be them. Um, so I try to uh, form myself into a constellation in the morning, just so I can experience a new form. And, and then um, mm. I'll, I'll just go on my way. And I have many clients, uh, many are recurring clients. But sometimes I have new clients, I will do intake, um, you know, whether it's a star who doesn't like you mentioned the Leo before, and it is true, some of these stars and constellations do feel very 
outdated. Um, you know, yeah. as classic as wearing a black dress to a night party is, sometimes you want to add a little pizzazz. Sometimes you want so to wear true. red, you know? Yeah. No, absolutely. Killing it with the metaphors. Thank you. I wrote that one three weeks ago. <clears throat> that, I mean, it feels just as relevant today. Well, well, I, I suppose, what are you interested in knowing more about? So, I mean, my well, most recent, I, we do have client star, conf, star confidentiality, I'm sorry. Um, I call them clients because I don't want the stars to feel unhuman mm -hmm. when they come to me in my human world. Mm. But what I do do is I reassign them and redistribute them across space when they don't feel they fit in with their constellation, when they right. grow out of their form. So um, the last star I worked with, uh, I won't mention the exact mm -hmm. coordinates, but I will say they were part of a long-standing constellation that has been around for centuries, um, but some of the information has already been downloaded, like, uh, like Dr. <laughs> Sorry. Like Dr. Bug was... <laughs> explaining um, sometimes we download things like the Pythagorean theorem and then it's mm -hmm. in our computers and our clouds which mm -hmm. I'm sure you already know but the sky was a cloud written ancient times and we are just mirroring back what they told us sometimes a star feels unused because they're not necessary anymore and they want to move on so I helped reassign a uh, ancient star from a very old constellation into a new one. And you're in talking fact, about cancer. I know you're talking about cancer. Oh, am, am I talking about cancer? Old can yes, cancer is quite old and honestly very weepy. And, you know, I am mm -hmm. a cancer rising, but I have to say sometimes too weepy. You know, you put too many emotional stars together and they just are just very emotional. Nothing wrong with emotion, but balance is very important in the universe. So anyways, basically I assigned this new star to a, um, a, a up and coming constellation. In fact, I, it's going to drop in 2022. So I can't really tell you too much about it. Nice. But I will say that there is some information contained within that will help us time travel. So that is very exciting. And um, I think this is going to be a new start for this star. That I, I mean, This star was feeling so tired and exhausted being in this old constellation. You know, they were very excited to switch it up. This is the big time, right? This is the show. It's gonna it's the end of the show. the show. It's big, big it's, things. We're very excited. I've read, it's, I've it's read drafts big. of the paper. It's very, it's very exciting. Yes, but I, as I you know, with drafts, they change. You know, because the, yes, you know, when you open a window, it comes in, and when you close it, it's gone. So you can't really, you know, you can't really rely on the draft. Very little control. Very little control over it. Yes. God, it's so, it's so like I'm just, I'm starstruck. You know, like just by how, uh, like you're. For me, I'm just on the outside. I just watch the stars, you know, if yeah. that. And it's just like to see the people who are like there and like behind the scenes. I I just, oh, wow. It must be so cool to know these stars. It is quite cool. I try to um, hide my excitement when I'm out in the field because, you know, sometimes – it, it, sometimes I do get excited. You know, I got to meet. Right. Well, maybe I can tell you this story because, you know, this this star, um, I, I got to meet. Okay. The, I'm sorry. I got the to meet. The hot goss. We're yes. getting the hot goss. Let me just say, I, I'm i during the uh, Great Conjunction, okay, and that's when the planets join. And sometimes the planets look like stars from far away, but as we know, they're not stars. But when the planets they surround the stars. Sometimes what will happen is stars will form around a planet, illuminating mm -hmm. that planet, creating sort of a, a star festival, sort of like how humans go to music festivals. Stars also congregate and they sort of have this, um, they have this experience where they dance around and they exchange information. So when they leave, they become new information. And that is why we get new things. Like it's actually a, f a fallacy that people who believe the earth are flat are incorrect. In fact, they just happened to look up while these stars were exchanging information and somehow it got stuck in their brain that it was a complete thought. So in order to fix any incorrect thinking, all you have to do is find the original coordinates that you were when you looked up and you got that incorrect thought and then it will mm. reset. Uh, but this is hard because nowadays people don't always look up or remember everywhere they went. Um, and that is, you know, that is a travesty. We're working, we're, we are working on it. We're, we're, you know, 
the GPS was invented for this exact reason. The, the spread of misinformation by you know, yes. looking at the wrong time, the wrong place, and sort of remembering incorrectly. Uh, it's a scourge on the planet. And so we've developed you know, GPS to sort of help people triangulate themselves, center themselves, get the mm-hmm. correct information, and not let these sort of half sentences, these almost thoughts, leak into the general population. Exactly. I I think it is so important. You should, you know, you teach at Harvard, and I think it's so great that you are able to reach young minds, because we often think that the physical form is the most important. I mean, but we you mentioned you call it physics, uh, yet you're mm-hmm. studying space and stars. Uh, do you see how the human thought is illogical? Uh, if the art of physics is studying space and space is formless, why do we call it physics? Because perhaps physical form is not the priority. It's uh, also a way to sort of, um, you know, it helps us conceptualize it. Uh, I think a, a, a more uh, appropriate word might be astro-consciousness. You know, yeah, some, uh, that's a great way to say it. Lines. Um, Much but like I think it's, it's too complicated for folks. Yes. Oh, if I may <clears throat> offer one more metaphor. Um, please, please. Uh-huh. And this one is just off the dome, so I have not written this, so <laughs> forgive me if it doesn't make any sense. But when you see a tree by itself, you might say there's a fir. But when you see a forest, you say, oh, that's the Angelus forest. Yet the Angelus forest is made up of new firs all the time. Y- do you understand with stars, it's the same thing. You can say, Whoa. oh, it's easier to create this idea that that forest is one. But when does the forest end? What if one flower grows on one side and one flower grows on the other? Would you say that flower is an abandon- abandoner? Did you, would you consider that flower have turned its back on its forest right. family? Or was it just in the wrong position because possibly these boundaries don't exist? It was exist. always there, though. It was where it was. Yes, much like Orion's dick, that flower became its own piece of finery. Indeed, so, if there was, if the, if you wow. similarly, if you were in this forest, you cut down all the trees and replant other trees. Those trees grow. Is it the same forest? Is it not? Are That's we there? Also Are we not true. there? We call in fact, that. That is uh, actually what I do with stars. I do mm-hmm. relocate them. So there is a delicate way mm-hmm. to create the illusion that it's the same forest, but um, it, it must be done with the right timing because if. It could be alarming to look up one day and see absolutely no stars. Imagine looking up and the Big Dipper is gone. It would alarm a lot of humans. But little fact, uh, little known fact, the Big Dipper has actually changed formations 112,000 times just in this calendar year. Um, 112? That is one of the most popular assignments in my clients. That, so that, that's a finicky constellation. There's a lot yeah. of sneaking around over there. List. Yeah, it's it's, it's very, very long wait list. Why is it why, very self conscious, kind of uneasy, a little anxious, not really mm-hmm. comfortable um, in its uh, corona, I guess. Yeah, I think a lot of times people, well, not people, I'm sorry, the, my my clients, the stars, the the lumens, they they mm-hmm. they look at the Big Dipper as this as this aspirational identity because it is so Mm. followed throughout the world by humans and and looked at, you know, and everybody likes to be looked at. But once they Mm -hmm. get there, it's too much pressure. And it's much like when you smell, um, you know, peanuts on the street of Times Square in New York and they smell good, but then you buy them and they don't taste good. It is much like that. The stars finally fit into this Big Dipper constellation and they find that them being a part of it makes them uncomfortable with the identity of the Big Dipper. It only exists as this idea outside of themselves. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So when you're talking to the Big Dipper and they express this kind of opinion about like life and everything and themselves, what, what do you say to the Big Dipper to, you know, like, sure. do you tell them like, first off, don't move. Like whatever you do, don't move. You might change things. Or is it like, if you want to move, it's, it's cool. Like I'd be scared that like I tell the Big Dip or something, and then mm-hmm. I go back home and we're all lizards and or they're something. Go- yes, I see. That is a common fear, and I hear that all yeah. the time. You know, at least three times a day. I want to be a lizard. I, yeah, I hear that three times a day, and and, and it is a. Um, I will say I, it is an accurate fear. Okay, I don't want to say don't worry because that is very highly possible. That that is why what I do is so important. Should mm-hmm. should the Big Dipper and the Big Dipper is made up of multiple stars. So I think right. this is where the stars have this pressure to be a part of this legendary existence instead of understanding that being a part of it makes it legendary. So 
in the same way these stars join the Big Dipper and they suddenly think, oh no, like I'm making the Big Dipper worse. And so the anxiety does kick in there. Um, mm. and, and they they are mostly, most stars do follow the rules. They do not move. But in the event that a star does go rogue, we do have what we call stand-in stars, um, understudy stars. And these are stars mm. that are ready to go. They're perhaps between assignments. And they have a history mm. in their resume of having existed in some bigger formations, such as, you know, I've Sagittarius yeah. and Orion. And they, right, right. And they, they are always ready to step back in. Um, they're sort of, as you Night call... Night players. Yeah. Yes, like a clincher. What do they call it? A pinch hitter. You know, something like, yeah, yeah like yeah. a celebrity shot. And and these stars do we don't we do really treat them well because we understand it's it's a high responsibility. And they'll, but I've read about it. They'll they'll do anything, like literally yes. anything. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes, they it's will a real do problem. It is. It is it's, quite. Yeah, it is becoming a problem. We may need a new system for this because it well, it can't you know? be so. F it's not quite balanced when we right. put all this pressure. The whole point of stars is that they cover the sky and they're everywhere but once we start assigning importance to one star over the other as you see with the sun mm -hmm. and, and the sun mm -hmm. has a huge ego and you know i refuse right. to work with the what sun a right. the sun cannot be assigned and that's why the sun has grown so big and is going to explode and and that's so is, big yeah it's very unfortunate um if only the star the sun would just agree to work with others the sun could Seriously, easily calm be relocated. down you're good yeah. you're not great right. Just yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, and it and it is and and it will explode. And um, when that time comes, I will say I told you so. But until then, yeah. I refuse to speak to the the sun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we have m so much room in space, you know. Yes, there is not so much everything room. revolves around you. There's other stars Ooh. that things will revolve around. Well, and stars revolve around other stars. This is true if you're a human and you are you are viewing the sky through human eyes. But if you oh, were small brain. But if you were a star, you wouldn't have eyes and uh, you wouldn't you wouldn't That's consider true. revolving an action. You would just exist. Uh, it's much being. like it's true. Yes. you exist now and you don't you're not actively thinking of flaking off your dead skin as you walk around every day but that That's is true. what's I happening don't. and it is happening consciously your body is asking your skin your dead skin to drop off but you mm -hmm. with your eyes are not noticing this i'm not thinking about it exactly. my brain isn't yeah right. yeah yeah so so you're saying maybe the sun doesn't know that they're just like big piece of shit I think the sun is quite aware. Um, I, me and the the oh, committee of it um, knows. yes, Doctor Bug is aware. Um, you know, we we've had quite a bit of problems with the sun. Um, the sun is an example of someone who refuses to get help, not being able to be helped. Um, and that's an important saying mm. in my field of study, that we don't help stars that don't want to be helped. What keeps them from going rogue then? Because if they're not, they don't want to be helped. They can just like mess up the whole place. And then, like, turn all that good knowledge, that good information in, into bad information. Sorry if I sound alarmist. I'm just well, trying to figure thing, out how it all works. I think one thing to understand, there's no um, – it's not really good or bad information, right? If, a, you know, if a star changes or if a star goes rogue or, you know, makes, like, quote, unquote, a mistake, uh, mm -hmm. it's still in a constellation. Mm -hmm. It's still mm -hmm. giving you good information because it is correct for that moment yes exactly it's it's not good right. information exclamation point it's good comma information you do you understand it's good mm -hmm. there is good. information once good. the information exists information. it's good yeah no once again killing it with the metaphor because it is the way it is that is but that reality. isn't to say there isn't a more optimal existence and i think that is what we strive for uh we meaning uh, myself and um my my other self which is the the, the formless self that i mm. astral project into the uh, sky in order to work more closely with these um clients and we both agree that um information can move so fast that it can cause chaos, but it doesn't mean it's mm -hmm. bad. And and you ask what stops this from happening, and the answer is nothing. Um, in fact, it has been happening, uh, and, and I'm glad that you haven't felt it, but there has been quite a surge of information lately that is is quite, quite um, 
rapid and maybe a little too rapid. And so we we have been having some issues with this. But I do believe once we get all the stars assigned in happy constellations and they are mm-hmm. settled, that things will find an equilibrium. Now, do the constellations talk to each other? Like does like like Scorpio and like and Libra have anything to say to each other or are they just too far? Because I always like to think I see all these little pictures in my head when I look up and I'm like, oh, that's nice. It's a little scorpion crawling around there. And then I like see Libra. and I'm like, oh, there's some scales to judge things. And I'm like, mm. maybe there's a story here, you know, maybe, like between the two of them. Like, does that make sense? Like, do they talk? Do they have an interaction? The fact that they're close in the sky, does that matter at all? They they do, but um, Scorpio notoriously does not enjoy Libra's company, and uh, but but the stars they they do. In fact, there was actually um, quite a scandal recently um, when when um, you know the the North Star actually started talking mm-hmm. to a star in Pegasus, and also mm-hmm. was already in partnership with Sirius. And that to me is, you know, Mm -hmm. whatever you choose as a star to live your life, you know, there's no such thing as one lifestyle for a star. But I do believe that they they should be on the same page. So in this case, the North Star was not following, not to be, you know, metaphorical, allegorical here, but was not following their own North Star because they were Mm -hmm. telling one star that they were lifelong partners and then also going out and seeking and then, other connections. And to yeah. me, that is not Shh. honest. And I feel that to give information to humans that is correct, you have to first give information that's correct to yourself. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. That yeah. makes a lot of sense to me. But but yes, that stars are just like humans. They, they're they just stars. They're just like us. They, um, <laughs> they buy toilet paper. They, they go to the gas station. Um, they wear sunglasses. They're just like humans. What's That's your favorite true. star, um, if I might ask? Mm, favorite star. I mean, I do. I said this earlier, and I know you're not gonna love it because you just you were just talking about what a honestly what a vain, vain, just overbearing bore our sun is. Mm. But I can't get past the fact that. It's why we're here, you know. I have to be grateful. I have to be appreciative of the light, the warmth, the energy that we get mm. from it. Um, and, and so, that's okay. you know, that's okay. it's, I know, you know, it's a, a hot take, if you will. Um, do you have, do you have a favorite star? Well, I, I um, you know, I do, but I try not, to, I don't publicly pick favorites because, you know, I do work with some of them as clients right. and, and sometimes yes, they do yes. listen to my podcasts. Um, in fact, I send them to the, I have a Uh-oh. weekly newsletter where I, uh, email all my clients and, um, send them my merch link so they can purchase, um, merch because, you know, being a star, uh, stellar edition does not pay very well. And so therefore I need to hustle, um, <laughs> sidekicks. <laughs> well, the thing is the stars, they don't, they don't use the same currency that we do because they live so long. So That's true. There's no necessity for money when you are so secure in your existence. Unfortunately, um, that doesn't translate to the human world. And I do enjoy being an activist among the stars. And so that's my sacrifice is I spend my time working with rocks in the sky that um, cannot pay me. And um, I need to make merch in order to support myself. Mm. Yeah, we all got to get that paper. Mm-hmm. And if you read read my upcoming book, look up exclamation point. Um, you will mm. see all that outlined um, in that. But it, it is a it, the book can only be read in light language. Um, it is a mirror. It's so if entirely, you don't understand how oh. to read your own mind, <laughs> you won't understand it. Gotcha. Well, th- look for that though. Uh, on I assume all major booksellers. No, look up. Is, look up. Look, look for up. that look is yeah. um, the prequel. Oh right. Uh this every time uh every time I read any of your stuff or and this is the first time we've really like gotten to talk to each other, you blow my mind uh with your metaphors and everything. Like you you just uh really weird wild stuff. Thank um, you so much. Um that is such a compliment. I love to blow minds. Fascinating. Um mm-hmm. actually, you know, you wanted some tea and I 
personally, not myself, but mm-hmm. a colleague of mine has blown Orion's dick. So that it, and oh, I yeah. have heard good things. So, uh, you know, it is, um, that's the tea that right there is that the stars, they do come. Mm-hmm. Oh, yep. oh, good. Mm-hmm. It, I was it wondering was about that. The first dick, after all. When you see a twinkle it, the f- <laughs> in a sky, it is star jizz. That's what that is. It's star coming. Yes. That's, it, stars come just like us. Yes, That's stars come just like us. Troubling. That is terrifying. Uh, this is uh, not quite a segue, but a good uh, time to uh, open this up to what we call on this uh, program the universe of Twitter. Uh, we have questions and comments from Twitter about the show. They're taken from mm. the Twitter handle at Prof Scott Bug. Uh, listeners can follow us and ask Mr. Bug and guests uh, any questions they have during the segment. Uh, you're free to join uh, as well, of course, all right, Dr. All right. Twitter is uh, a, a black hole in the human world, is what I've heard. It really is. Truly. At Weak Bone Man asks, I hate the Big Dipper. It doesn't even look like a dipper. It looks like a man holding like two baby goats or maybe rat traps to me. Why isn't that why it, what it's called? Actually, it's interesting um, because it almost was. Um, unfortunately, there was already a constellation called a man holding like two baby goats or maybe rat traps, um, which is actually how we discovered uh, logarithms. Mm. Um, oh, yeah. It, that makes sense. It kind of looks, yeah. Yes, it does. So, so he's right and he's wrong. He's right and he's wrong. There is a constellation called that. It is not the Big Dipper. Uh, it's a very it's important constellation. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You you can you can see it um, from uh, Earth's moon, and uh, it is uh, it is glorious uh, if you understand um, you know various maths uh, mm. because uh, logarithm right. you know logarithms are, are, are a big step for for a lot of people to sort of this comprehend. Is, um, this is a good Don't example of how. Being a part of something like the Big Dipper is is just full of, f- just makes you ripe for uh, criticism, because th- this this weak bone man was not even mm. looking at the Big Dipper and believes they know something about the Big Dipper, and this is a common, common problem, and that's why there's such a turnover in the Big Dipper. Right. I mean, you got to think about how the the constellations feel. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's it's taxing. I assume. Um, All right, uh, let's move on. Tiny Hats for Snakes asks, if werewolves turn into wolves when the moon's out, are there any constellation wolves? What are those like? I mean, they're constellations of of more or less anything. Um, We have not yet found uh, evidence of a werewolf constellation. I don't think that's what uh, Tiny Hats for Snakes is asking. Um, Right. uh, Werewolves, uh, as we we currently understand, are fictional. Um, there is, uh, no evidence, uh, beyond a few captured werewolves. Um, so, you know, we're still, we're still looking into that. Um, there are a few constellations of wolves. Um, they do not only appear at the full moon. They do describe, um, the moon, uh, being howled at. And Mm. you can see, um, if you look at the little dipper, uh, and you take the little handle and you follow the handle uh, in that direction all the way around, take a bit of a nap, wake up the next day, and look in that exact spot. That is where the constellation would be that describes wolves. You can't see it because it's daytime. Important to know, constellations do exist during the day. They're just taking sleeps. Um, uh, So it is there. We have special telescopes to see that. Mm. But mm-hmm. could perhaps um, tiny hats for snakes be asking about constellations that become become physically form have, take the form of wolves uh, the way humans do? Um, because it's possible. I, oh, possibly. I, yes. I yeah. have not witnessed mm-hmm. that, but I will say that there are times when their stars go through an identity crisis at the exact same moment a human form at the same you know coordinates below is going through that and if they mm-hmm. vibrate on the same frequency their consciousness is, could get swapped uh, it's what we call uh, the freaky friday from phenomenon and mm-hmm. phenomenon spelled with an f of course so that's a of triple course, f and triple uh, or f. f to the third um, as we say mm-hmm. in the scientific star community mm-hmm. and when this happens um, it can be jarring but it can be very exciting the star which has no form 
can suddenly exist as a human form. And the human suddenly exists in space as nothing. And um, that that mm. happens from time to time. So that's the closest thing I can think of to a werewolf. It is tragic um, to those those people who end up in space. Um, yes, but then they're no longer people. Yeah. So at the moment you become nothing, you are no longer upset to be nothing. Exactly. You can't even have the, the, the tragedy. It no longer exists by virtue yes. of the tragedy occurring. Exactly. Dang. Indeed. So that's what, yeah, okay. It's uh, literally, handsome... literally everything I know about wolves. <laughs> aside, aside, of course, for the, t- the tiny dogs that can evolve into wolves, but that's a whole other <laughs> mm-hmm, situation. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, at Handsome Kidney Stone tweeted, a lot of constellations are hunters or crabs or Leos or whatever. Are there any constellations based on stuff I like? This is a pretty uh, it, self-centered I question. I do think there is a kidney stone in the works. Um, I'm assuming mm-hmm. Handsome Kidney Stone enjoys kidney stones. Probably does. So I don't know how handsome this kidney stone is, but I can find out. Um, I do have a... I do have a person over at the um, body part constellations department, so I can let you know how handsome that kidney stone will be. But well, it's I mean, not it's dropping until twenty twenty five. So yeah, and it's it's probably like five five stars or whatever. How handsome could it be, really? I don't know. Uh, it seems like it's a you problem. Well, One handsome Direction had five stone. stars, and they were pretty handsome. So I wouldn't, you know, okay. overlook okay. that. But yeah, I don't want to bring my assumptions, you know, to task. I'm just saying, you know, it's a it's a pretty selfish question. <laughs> stuff you like? I mean, the, what the, about stuff I exactly like? Exactly. What stuff you like? You know, the universe is bigger than ourselves. Perhaps this is a troll. Perhaps this is the sun d- Could be. creating a fake account because the sun notoriously <sighs> loves to shit on Classic. the other <laughs> constellations. <laughs> That's uh, true. Our son, the troll, classic. I love it. And the sun <laughs> is sort of like a handsome kidney stone, if you think about Shiny, it. Shiny, sharp, bright, mm-hmm. handsome. Yeah. I would say handsome. Very yes. handsome. Yeah, very handsome. Still handsome. Yep. The, there's no doubt the sun is handsome. Round like many stones. Mm-hmm. Exactly. There's types of stones that are round. Yeah. Indeed. Indeed. Uh, at Fun With Hammers asks, I had a bad year, and I heard that everything's based on my superstitions. So was there like something bad in the sky last year or what? Well, that depends on how you define a year. And bad. Like 365 days? Front to back, back to front, middle to side. Yeah. Uh-huh. Do you measure your year up to down, January 1st? In, to... in to out, you know? Exactly. I usually go bottom up and then top side. Mm-hmm. Wait, no. I usually go mm-hmm. bottom up and then I go side to top. And then I go back to the side, mm-hmm. and then I go back to the top. Oh, yes. The Is backside that... top method. Um, no, that's mm-hmm. a popular one. A third of the population goes by that. Um, no, right. I, I like to use the thirds method where I split oh, each right. day into okay. thirds, right? And then I – You're a third or – Yes, and yeah. I add all the ones together, all the twos together, all the threes together, and then I divide each one by their yeah. average and then – put them all together and then divide that by my entire existence. Uh, and then the, the highest average is the best year, but that does make it a little more even. Th- um, it does make it even, but like we're, th- we're mincing I words mean, here because like when you do all that math, you get like about a year. About keyword, like about keyword, about. You get about a year, but, but the year is not as bad if I may, because most of sure. my mornings um, were, were bad, but um, a lot of my oh, yeah, 26 minutes, um, you know, cause I measured by the minute. Uh, we're not. Mm-hmm. We're actually surprisingly pretty good. So I just m- decided to measure the year by how the quality of the 26 minute of every day for 365 days, and, and it actually turned out a little bit better than That's average. Pretty good. That works. That pretty works. Better. I go. I usually go by the one day method. Okay. Um, I'm uh, still in my one day mm. um, after uh, what you would call many many years just on this earth. I'm still I'm still rocking the one day. day. One. Uh, right. So day one, you know, all things considered. Not that bad. Not that bad. Mm-hmm. So, fun with hammers. Maybe check your perspective. Check, is, your, I guess, what check, we're, your, check your perspective. Exactly. Is what we're hearing. Look up, All right, next. as they say. 
look up. Yeah. Hey, there we go. Uh, at Bill Nye tweets, did you fuck my wife, Bug? Did you fuck? Listen oh, here. My no, God. you listen. All right. Uh, you listen here. Uh, of course. Yeah. For the first, first of all, you better stop fucking tweeting at me, Mr. Minoy. I swear to God. I'm Second of all, sorry. of course I fucked your wife. I'll fuck her again tomorrow. I'll fuck her again tonight. I fucked your wife. I'm going to keep fucking her. You better fucking leave me alone. All right, you bruv. You got to get me out. I'm going to get there. I'm going to go to fuck her. I'm going to, I'm going to slap her, you know, my dick around and then I'm going to get it up and then I'm going to dare my dangly little I'm dangler. I'm so gonna, sorry. Oh, I'm so you. sorry. Yeah. He always gets in. I you don't say, know. You say, but he doesn't say, get into say, his wife, it say, seems. No, he doesn't. I do. I do. That's With my, dang, my dangling ding dong, I'm going to keep on doing it. And there's nothing he can do to stop it. He can't. I am. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> keep his Bill Nye uh, burns coming. I uh, swear. It's, it's, uh, I, it will never happen again. All right. Let's just move right past it. At Big Money just get, Elbows. Just get over it, mate. Just get over it, all right? She doesn't want to. Uh, mm, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. That, uh, this is my fault. At Big Money Elbows asks, I think constellations are archetypes from stories that connect humanity throughout time, a kind of visual lexicon that reveals a relationship with our humble beginnings through iconography. So where are them dicks and titties at? Everywhere. They're everywhere. All, yeah. over, the, all over the place. I mean, Orion's dick. I mean, obviously we're talking about Orion's dick, you know, that's, you know, there's no, no question there. Um, I believe, uh, you know, uh, shortly after Orion's dick was discovered, Cassiopeia's big honking titties was discovered. Mm, um, yeah. you so, go. you know, uh, <laughs> there, if you, again, look up, alter your perspective, um, open your mind up a little bit for fucking once in your f- fucking life, big money elbows, um, you'll see them. You'll see, you'll see, you'll see them dicks. You'll see them titties. Uh, you'll see that puss puss. This um, is, I 100% agree with you, Dr. Bug. Um, the dicks and titties are everywhere if you just look for them. And and I'll say, I usually do say look up, but in this case I'll say look down because mm-hmm. you ha- oh. the dicks and titties are inside you the whole time. And mm-hmm. if you, true. once you see one dick and titty inside you, you've seen them all because once yeah. you realize we're all one dick and titty, then you realize yeah. that every dick and titty is you. It's all about perspective. Yes. I, I think I get it now. Mm-hmm. I think I'm getting there. You or at least the I'm close. You are the titty. I am the dick. Yeah. I am the titty. We are the dick. We are the titty. This has been a fascinating conversation. I want to thank you, Professor Scott Bug. I also want to thank Always. Dr. Uvula Tardanis the first. Yes, the first. For joining us. And it's, uh, you mm-hmm. could call me UTI for short. That is the, right, my, right, right. my abbreviated name. Right. As, as you're known well in scholastic circles, yes. it's just UTI. Right. Yep. Uh, thank you, UTI, for uh, joining us. I have, I would like to ask you, this is the part where, uh, is there are there any comedians, websites, or shows you wish to plug for any reason at all? Uh, this would be the time to do that. Ah, uh, well, you know, I, I, I'm just looking up right now, and um, I feel a download telling me. So I'm just going to plug this download. Uh, I don't know. I'm not associated with this person at all, but um, you should check out the comedian Teresa Lee. Uh, I believe she has a podcast called You Can Tell Me Anything. Um, and it sounds like she also is on Twitter at Larissa T. So I, I suppose you should do that. I, I don't know anything about her but um Mm -hmm. that's what the stars are telling me right now Mm -hmm. listen to the stars congratulations uh the very (laughs) well plugged uh so look into that everybody listen to your heart listen to the stars listen to yourself Mm -hmm. and change your perspective uh i'd like to uh thank our twitter followers and all commenters throughout the internet your input is invaluable Invaluable. uh except this batch this batch was kind of weak uh, so some real, less, some real stinkoids in there. So, yeah. some, so less valuable. Uh, I want to thank everyone for joining us. This concludes another episode of Bewilderments and Scientifics. I've been and continue to be Abe Epperson. Thank you again, professors, for joining us. Thanks, bro. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Abe again. This podcast was a collaboration between the creators of Some More News and Small Beans. If you like this podcast, please stop by patreon.com slash smallbeans, where you will get new episodes early, as well as exclusive content provided by Small Beans. We love you.